Hello and welcome to another Roblox tutorial. In this video, I will be showing you the different types of welds in Roblox. And this stuff can get very confusing to a new user or even experienced user in Roblox just because there's a lot of different types and they're all made at like different times in Roblox. And I'll tell you which one you should be using, which one's the most recent, and which one I like the most. So, stay tuned, I hope you all enjoy, and this is basically sort of like a history video of the Roblox welds, but also gives you a lot of helpful tips for all of the welds as well. So, if you enjoy, make sure to show me with your likes and subscribes, but without further ado, let's get into the video. Okay, so let's get started, and let me create a part, and the first type of weld we'll be talking about is going to surface, and then weld, and you may be wondering, what does this do, I've never seen it before, because I've never used this, and the only reason I'm using it is for the sake of this video, and this simply is a texture. It does nothing in regards to physics, so don't be misled by the name, which says weld, looks like it should be able to weld parts together but that's not the case it's only visual i think it may have had a purpose back in the early days of roblox but these days not so much so it just can make a part look cool i guess it doesn't really do anything other than that so let me just delete this and so the next type of weld we'll be talking about is an actual weld and there's a few ways to make this sort of weld. The simplest and most abstract is clicking the Join Surfaces button up here, which when you move a part around, you'll see the little white outline at the very bottom. Let me zoom in. You see that little white outline? And once you drop the part, you can see a little drop down appears in your Explorer, and this creates a weld. So this is a more recent type of weld, but still not the most recent. And it has a part 0 and part 1 properties, doesn't matter which one's which. And it has a C-frame 0 and like C-frame 1 property, which tells you like the offsets of the parts. Which makes it good for technical users, but when you're just trying to weld stuff together, it leads to kind of weird stuff, like when you're programming it or like when you're doing stuff like that. But it works pretty well, it does its job, so let me just delete this real quick we're gonna like bring it into the air i guess so we can weld a few parts together just to show you it's really good for builders that's for sure since you don't really have to do that much to like weld things together but like here we go we can weld it like that you see these three parts are going to be welded together Oops, that's weird it's kind of laggy i don't know but you can see they're all welded together they all move around together which is exactly what we want but personally i don't prefer it so i'm just gonna get rid of these and now we're gonna go on to the third type of weld which is a weld constraint so this is the most recent type of weld let me just turn off join surfaces real quick and this is used for everything that involves welding and it's my personal favorite weld and there are a bunch of ways to create this weld constraint so first of all i can have these two parts i can go into the first part type in weld constraint and the little drop down plus menu i can go to weld constraint part zero will be this part and then part one will be this part and these parts are welded and the really cool thing about this is you can actually see the welds if you go to model show welds so i had it on by default and then if you want to see it on top of things, you can toggle draw on top. I'm going to leave it on because it lets me see through. And you can hold alt to like see the parts. It's like really, really, a really good system. And so these parts are now welded. They move together. I mean, you can see they move, but that's because I'm moving it like with my hand. And if we were to like rotate it like so, you can see they just fall as one, even though they're not necessarily touching. So that's the first way to create these welds. And let me just delete it. You can also delete it from here, which is also really cool. You don't have to go into the hierarchy and delete them there, which is really, really nice. But also, if I have, if I want to create welds a more intuitive way, I can go to Model, Create, then Weld. 
And this is another type of like body constraint. That's why it's called a world constraint. So it's in the constraint menu with everything else. And the really cool thing about this is I can click on this part. And I clicked on the base plate before. That's why that happened. So let me try that again. If I were to do create, I can click on this part. This starts the world. You can see there's this little red line. I can go click on this part to create, to finish the weld. And that works very nicely. You can do that for whatever parts you want. Or in some cases, let's say I already have this part selected, I do create, and I can pick sec the second part. And it automatically remembers the relative offset, so you don't have to do it yourself, which is really, really nice. And then, the best part about this, in my opinion, this is the sort of feature I use all the time, is when you want to weld a whole group of parts. So let's just, like, make a little stack, and then maybe rotate this. There we go. And, like, I can move this to the side or something. This is, like, a bunch of parts. I don't want to manually weld all of these. And let's say I had joined surfaces off while I was making it. So I can highlight everything. Right now I'm just dragging, but you could obviously control-click if you wanted to. But I'm just going to drag to select everything. And I go just create welds. And you can see it creates welds all in between them. And the reason this one's gray is because it's redundant. But you can leave that there if you want. One thing to note, however, is when you're doing this, when you're creating all of these welds, if even the welds can span like gaps of like they don't have to be colliding, if you highlight stuff that's not colliding, it won't weld it to like the separate body, which you need to keep in mind. So they need to be colliding in order for the welds to actually like register. So if we were to highlight it again, now that they're colliding, you can see it creates that weld, which is exactly what we want. And these welds work the exact same as the other welds, but they're a lot better in the fact that you can see them. They're a lot more recent, and they do work a lot better. And there's also a nice property where you can enable and disable this weld, which is really nice. And there's also this active property, which, like for example, on this weld, which is gray, it's off, in case you ever need that when you're scripting. So that's about it for this video. I know it was kind of short, but I hope I taught you something because to a new Roblox user, this stuff could be very intimidating. Or maybe if you're a little bit more experienced, but you're just kind of confused by all the different types of welds, I hope I could help. Make sure to like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. And if you, you would like to see a description of like the different functions and commands you can use with scripts to your welds and make sure to comment down below and i will show you because you can get some really cool stuff doing that but other than that i hope you guys have a nice day and goodbye